Good day, nurses. Welcome to JRN Review Academy. Today, guys, magbibigay tayo ng ilang sample question na pwede natin madala pagdating natin sa actual board examination. It's all about your cardiovascular disorder. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe para tuloy-tuloy ang ating pag-upload ng mga video. Okay, let's start. Question number one. The following nursing intervention should be included in the nursing care plan of a client with myocardial infarction. Except, A. Provide the meal plan, low sodium, low fat, low cholesterol diet. B. Place client in semi-powders position. C. Administer oxygen via nasal cannula as ordered. And letter D. Encourage use of bedpan for defecation. Guys, tingnan natin. The question is, what is the nursing care plan of the client with myocardial infarction? And take note of the keyword, except. So, ibig sabihin, ang hahanapin natin, negative intervention for this kind of client. So, is it A, B, C, or D? So, may sagot na po ba tayo, guys? Your letter B. Hey, the correct answer is letter D. Why letter D? The use of bedpan on defecation encourages use of balsalva maneuver. And that balsalva maneuver increases the work or the cardiac workload and may precipitate another myocardial attack to our patient. Guys, so bedpan po hindi po pwede. So, ano yung mas maganda natin gamitin instead of bedpan? We may use the bedside commode para hindi tayo mag-exert ng effort okay? or tinatawag natin balsalba maneuver para wala din tayong cardiac workload increases okay? na pwede makapag-precipitate to another attack of your myocardial infarction. So, the correct answer is letter D. A, B, and C are all nursing care plan for the client with myocardial infarction. So, letter A um, is for your um, nutrition. It should be small, frequent feeding for our client. Low sodium, low fat, low cholesterol. B and C is very important and also for the promotion of your oxygen. And also place the client in semi-powders position to allow greater diaphragm expansion, thereby the lungs expansion and better carbon dioxide or oxygen exchange para magkaroon tayo ng adequate cardiac output. So the correct answer is your letter D, encourage use of bedpan for defecation. Again, mas maganda kung bedside commode ang gagamitin ng pasyente para wala tayong balsalva maneuver. Question number two. Which of the following laboratory results or is, um, and some studies does not indicate the presence of myocardial infarction? A. Elevated SGPT Elevated SGOT Elevated LDH Elevated CKMB Guys, ang tinatanong enzyme studies laboratory for patient with myocardial infarction. Pero titingnan natin yung keyword again, does not indicate the presence of myocardial infarction. So, what is the correct answer? Sure. Letter Letter A. Okay? Letter A is the correct answer. Elevated SGPT does not indicate the presence of myocardial infarction. The myocardium does not produce SGPT only the liver cells produce SGPT. Okay, guys? Hindi ito kasama sa ating enzyme studies pagdating sa ating myocardial infarction. Option B, C, and D are enzyme studies that indicate the presence of myocardial infarction. Guys, pag tinanong sa board examination, what is the most 
cardiac specific enzymes. So, isasagot natin si KMB. Follow-up question. What is the most or what is the most definitive laboratory findings in clients with myocardial infarction? Isasagot naman natin dito is your troponin level. Okay? Your troponin level. So, the correct answer here is not included or does not included in the presence of myocardial infarction, letter A. Question number three. Nurse Jeff administered digoxin to the client with CHF. Okay? CHF is your um, congestive heart failure. The nurse should first check which of the following vital sign. A. Pulse rate. B. Apical pulse. C. Blood pressure. And your letter D. Respiratory rate. So, ano yung una nating ia assess sa ating client o sa pasyente natin bago tayo magbigay ng digoxin or the digitalis therapy to our patient. May sagot na po ba tayo? The correct answer is your letter letter boy or letter B. Okay? The correct answer is letter B. The nurse must check the apical rate or the heart rate first before digoxin administration. Okay? Guys, tandaan natin, okay? Tandaan natin that this uh, medication has positive inotropic effect. Pag sinabi natin inotropic or positive inotropic effect, it strengthens the force of cardiac contractility. Palalakasin niya po yung force of cardiac contractility. And another effect of your Digitalis or the digoxin has a negative chronotropic effect. Pag sinabi natin chronotropic effect, decrease, okay? Decrease the heart rate. Pinabababa naman niya ang heart rate ng ating pasyente. So, that's why ang kailangan natin gamitin, guys, assess the heart rate or the apical, apical pulse before administration of your digitalis. If the heart rate is less than, okay, if the heart rate is less than 60 or below 120 bits per minute, withhold the drugs, okay? Huwag natin ibibigay because uh, this effect, bradycardia or rebound tachycardia, pwede mangyari sa pasyente natin. Okay, so the correct answer is sure. Apical pulse. So, take note of this guys. Lagi po itong natatanong sa ating board examination. Question number 4. Atherosclerosis invades coronary blood flow by which of the following mechanism? A. Plaque obstruct the vein. B. Plaque obstruct the artery. C. Blood clot form outside the vessel wall and letter D harden vessels dilate to allow the blood flow through okay what is the answer guys the correct answer here sure letter B okay the correct answer is letter B lack of track the artery hindi po sila sa vein okay hindi sa vein Remember, atherosclerosis, guys, is the direct result of plaque formation in the artery. That's why letter B sagot natin. Hardened vessels can't dilate properly and therefore constrict the blood flow. Remember, guys, hindi rin po sa vein ang ating plaque formation. Okay? It should be letter B. Next question. What supplemental medication is most frequently ordered in conjunction with furosemide or your LASIK? Okay, or your LASIK. A. Pure chloride, digoxin, potassium, or sodium. So, ano daw yung supplemental medication, guys, is most frequently ordered in conjunction with furosemide? Or your tinatag natin diuretic. Okay. 
the answer, guys, is your letter, okay, letter C. Okay. Supplemental potassium is given with furosemide because the potassium loss that for as a result of this diuretic. Guys, pag sinabi po nating um, LASIK, your LASIK is belong to to loop diuretic. Okay? Pag sinabi nating loop diuretic, potassium wasting. Ibig sabihin, nag, tatapon tayo ng potassium natin. Kaya kailangan po natin ng supplemental potassium. Okay? Kailangan po nating dagdagan or i-replace yung potassium na natatanggal sa atin. So, the correct answer is your C. The, chlori the chloride and the sodium, guys, are not lost during diuretic. And your letter B, digoxin, act to increase contractility but is not given routinely with furosemide. Okay, so the correct answer is your letter C. Guys, balik lang tayo. Ano ba yung dalawang classification natin? So, we have thiazide. Your thiazide, guys, is also potassium wasting. Okay? Anong mga example natin ng thiazide? Like your diuril, like your hydrodiuril. And then, we have potassium wasting. Okay? Potassium wasting or yung tinatag nating loop diuretic. Dito kabilang yung tinatag nating purosemide or the LASIK. And your the bumetamide or yung bumex na tinatawag. Yun po yung nakakalos ng potassium natin na sumasama. Kaya kailangan po natin ng supplemental. And another type of your diuretic, yung tinatawag nating potassium sparing. Okay? Yung potassium sparing like your spironolactone, aldactone, or triamterin or the dirimium. So sila yung potassium sparing. Hindi natin kailangan ng um, supplemental ng potassium. Okay? Question is sure. Which of the following sounds now is distinctly heard on auscultation okay, during assessment over the abdominal region of abdominal aortic aneurysm or the AAA? Client A. Brewy B. Crackles D. Or C. Dullness and letter D. Friction rub So alin daw yung ma maririnig natin during auscultation sa pasyenteng merong AAA? Okay, the correct answer guys is your letter. Okay, letter A. So the correct answer is letter A. Brewing is a vascular sound resembling heart murmur suggests partial arterial occlusion. Option A, B, C, and D. So the correct answer is your option A. The B, the C, and the D ay hindi po kasali sa ating assessment for your AAA. Okay? So, the crackles, maririnig po natin sila as indicative of fluid in the lungs. And letter C, dullness, is heard over, uh, over the solid organ like your liver. And option D, friction rubs, indicate the inflammation of potential uh, peritoneal surface. So, the correct answer is letter A, Brewy. Ang makririnig po natin for your patient with um, AAA or abdominal aortic aneurysm. Okay, during your auscultation. Question number 7. When teaching the client with myocardial infarction, the nurse explained that the pain associated with MI is caused by A. Left ventricular overload B. Impending circulatory collapse, and letter C, extracellular imbalances, and letter D, insufficient oxygen reaching the heart muscle. So, what is the correct answer, guys? Okay, the correct answer here is your letter. Okay, letter D. Insufficient oxygen reaching the heart muscle causes increased lactic acid production due to anaerobic metabolism. Okay guys, your A, B, and C are not causes of chest pain in 
myocardial infarction. Okay? Remember, your lactic acid irritates the nerve ending in your myocardium, thereby causing your chest pain. Okay, so the answer is letter D. Question number eight. Which of the following is an uncontrollable risk factor that has been linked to the development of coronary artery disease or the CAD? So, ano daw yung mga risk factor uncontrollable? Okay? A. Exercise. B. Obesity. Letter C. Gender. And letter D. High cholesterol level. So, what is the correct answer, guys? Uncontrollable risk factor that has been linked to the development of your CAD. Okay? The correct answer is your letter letter C. Okay? The correct answer is letter C. Gender has been linked to coronary artery disease and is an uncontrollable or non-modifiable risk factor. Okay guys, hindi po natin makakontrol, hindi po natin mababago ang gender. Okay? So, A, B, and D, okay, it's more on modifiable, and letter C is non-modifiable, cannot be controlled. Okay? So, the correct answer is letter C. Question number 9. Which of the following group of symptoms indicated a ruptured abdominal aneurysm? Guys, may mga susunod tayong video na ipapakita natin or itatapik natin, guys, itatouch natin ito um, with your abdominal aneurysm. So, follow lang po tayo sa mga susunod natin video. A. Lower back pain, increased BP, decreased RBC, increased WBC. B. Severe low back pain, decreased BP, decreased RBC, increased WBC. C. Severe low back pain, decreased BP, decreased RBC, decreased WBC. And letter D. Intermittent low back pain, decreased BP, decreased RBC, increased WBC. Ano daw sa mga sign and symptoms na ito na indicated na nagraptured yung ating abdominal aneurysm? A, B, C, and D. So the question here your letter B. Okay? Letter B. Severe low back pain, sobrang sakit. Okay? Bumaba pa ang BP, mababa din ang RBC, mataas ang WBC due to the um, migration of your um, WBC count sa cells, kaya tumataas. Okay? So, A, B, C, and D. The correct answer is letter D. Severe low back pain indicate Ruptured of aneurysm secondary to pressure of being applied within the abdominal cavity. Guys, when ruptured occur, the pain is constant, okay? Because it can't be alleviated until na naoperahan yung pasyente, okay? Or na repair. Blood pressure because due to the blood loss, okay? Kaya bumababa ang BP natin due to the blood loss. Okay? Decrease ang BP. After the aneurysm rupture, guys, the vasculature is interrupted and the blood volume lost. So, BP wouldn't increase. Hindi yan mataas. Tandaan, okay? So, BP decrease. For some reason, guys, yung ating RBC count is decrease as well. And your WBC count increase as cells migrate to the site of your injury. So, magkakaroon ng multiplication, the bacteria, that's why we have um, WBC sometimes. That's why makikita natin yung mga pasyente natin na merong um, ruptured aneurysm, may mga fever sila. Okay? So, the correct answer is letter B. Last number, number 10. Which of the following signs and symptoms would most likely be experienced by a client with right-sided heart failure? Okay, so we are talking about the symptoms of patients with right-sided heart failure. A. Syncope 
clubbing of fingers, pallor. B. Hemoptysis, anemia, hypertension. C. Neck vein distended or neck vein distension, ankle edema, ascites. Letter D. Dysnea, crackles, ankle edema. What is the answer, guys? Okay. So, the correct answer is your letter C. Okay. The correct answer is letter C. Neck vein distension, enlarged liver, and ascites. So, this is um, sign and symptoms of your right-sided heart failure. Okay, guys. Your letter A, letter B, and letter D are all incorrect. So, letter C is the best answer, neck being distended, ankle edema, and your ascites are sign and symptoms of your right-sided heart failure. Guys, tandaan natin pag sinabi natin right-sided heart failure are due to the damning back of blood in the venous circuit. Okay? In the venous circuit. So, venous back up. Ano yung mga example nito? Neck vein engorgement, hepatomegaly, your ascites, splenomegaly, jaundice, hemolytic anemia, dependent or feeding edema, and leg varicocytes. So, right-sided heart failure. When we say left-sided heart failure, it's more on the pulmonary. Okay? It's more on the pulmonary. Cellular hypoxia and activation of your RAAS. Okay? Example natin, is your dyspnea or tophnea, crackles, cough, syncope, fatigue and your weakness and anorexia or example of your left-sided heart failure due to the pulmonary edema. Okay, so the answer is let. Thank you very much nurses for your listening and abang-abag lang po tayo sa ating mga susunod na video na i-upload and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe para makapag-upload pa tayo ng marami. So again, thank you very much and good luck to your examination.